Welcome to a real cult classic, Intermission with Megs. Our cult elder, Auntie Amy, and I had a chat, and we felt like you deserved weekly content, so every other week you'll get a short little episodic from your esteemed cult leader while you wait for the main act. This week's episode is an extended cut of Paris Hilton's I Remember When. Go grab your popcorn, hit the restroom, and stretch your legs, because this is Intermission with Megs. Paris Whitney Hilton was born on February 17, 1981 in New York City. Born to Richard and Kathy Hilton, Paris entered the world an heiress to the Hilton fortune. Her great-grandfather Conrad Nicholson Hilton had founded the infamous Hilton Hotel chain. Conrad had purchased his first hotel in Cisco, Texas in 1919. While Conrad took a huge hit due to the Great Depression, he still managed to expand into Chicago and New York, making huge acquisitions like the Waldorf Astoria in New York and the Stevens Hotel in Chicago, which was the world's largest hotel at the time. He continued his expansion westward and then internationally and was also married to Zsa Zsa Gabor, by the way. After his passing in 1979 from pneumonia, he left the bulk of his fortune to the Conrad and Hilton Foundation. His son, Baron, Paris's grandfather, contested the will as he had spent the bulk of his career building Hilton Hotels with his father. He was awarded 4 million shares of the company, the foundation received 3.5 million, and the W. Baron Hilton Charitable Remainder Trust got the remaining 6 million. Conrad's other son, Conrad Jr., was Elizabeth Taylor's first husband, making Liz Paris's great aunt. Baron, Paris's grandfather, continued to run Hilton Hotels Corporation, but also founded the American Football League and was the original owner of the LA Chargers. He helped merge the AFL with the NFL, which created the Super Bowl. Barron had eight children, one of which was Richard Howard Hilton, father to Paris. Richard launched his commercial real estate firm, Hilton Realty Investments, in 1984 and in 1993 formed Hilton and Highland, which, for all you Real Housewives of Beverly Hills slash Buying Beverly Hills fans out there, was the agency that Maurizio started at. As a child, Paris split her time between Beverly Hills, the Hamptons, and the Waldorf Astoria. She attended school in L.A. at the Buckley School in Sherman Oaks. Laura Dern, Sarah Gilbert, Paris Jackson, Gabby Hoffman, and Nicole Ritchie also attended Buckley. She also spent time at the St. Paul the Apostle School, a Catholic school. She started out her freshman year at the Marywood Palm Valley School, a prep school in Rancho Mirage, for the 1995-96 school year. But 1996, the family headed back east, where Paris attended the Professional Children's School, which has many, many, many famous alumni. It was during her time in New York that Paris started getting into trouble. She was skipping school and partying regularly. Kathy and Richard were worried about her and decided to send her to boarding schools for troubled teens. One of those was the Provo Canyon School. The school was sold to Kathy and Richard as a normal boarding school, and as far as they were aware for many years, it was. But Paris revealed in the 2022 documentary, This is Paris, that it was far from normal. She was regularly given mystery pills, and when she refused to take them, was put in solitary confinement for upwards of 20 hours without clothing. She said it was a living hell, enduring verbal, emotional, and physical abuse from teachers and administrators. She spent 11 months at Provo, leaving shortly after her 18th birthday. Afterwards, she attended Dwight School, another prep school in Manhattan, but she ended up dropping out and would later earn her GED. Once she was back in New York and done with school, she picked up right where she left off. As a 16-year-old with a fake ID, Paris had already cultivated an it-girl persona among the nightlife elite. Now that she was 18 and free to do whatever she wanted, she continued making public appearances at clubs and movie premieres. She was being flown to Vegas to open hotels and signed with the Orange Man's modeling agency, T-Management. She also started acting and was a big enough name to make cameo appearances in movies like Zoolander. Her major break came when she landed the reality TV show The Simple Life with her childhood friend Nicole Ritchie, daughter of Lionel. The show saw the pair exchanging their sidekicks and credit cards for farm life in Altus, Arkansas. It would launch both into global stardom. Initially, the premise had Paris and her sister Nikki starring together, but Nikki dropped out not wanting to be in the spotlight. The show premiered on December 2nd, 2003, shortly after a tape of Paris being intimate with her ex-boyfriend Rick Solomon was leaked on ye olde internet. 
Rick was a professional poker player who Paris had been in a relationship with in 2001. She had said that Rick had pressured her into making the tape, telling her that if she didn't do it, he'd find someone else who would. Paris was 19. Rick was 29. The tape devastated Paris's family, and she couldn't leave the house for three months afterwards. However, the Simple Life's ratings were very, very good, and its success was partially attributed to the release of that tape. Around the time that The Simple Life launched, Paris was engaged to model Jason Shaw, but the two broke it off due to Paris being too young for that level of commitment. That same year, she dated some 41 frontman Derek Wibley, which is peak 2000s nostalgia. In 2004, she dated Backstreet Boys' Nick Carter for seven months before the pair split in July, which Nick attributed to Paris's partying and her influence over him, saying that she fed his worst impulses. And party... Paris did, spending most weeknights partying with sister Nikki and bestie Nicole. She was absolutely sliving with her chihuahua Tinkerbell. She would go on to date a fellow Paris, Paris Latsis, heir to a Greek shipping fortune in December of 2004. The pair would become engaged eight months later, but would inevitably call off the wedding in September 2005. Fear not, though, Paris hopped from one Greek shipping heir to another, dating Stavros Niarchos, who was also the son of a billionaire shipping tycoon. 2006 would end up being quite the year for Paris. That May, while at Hyde Nightclub in LA, she got into a heated argument with Lindsay Lohan. It was rumored that Lindsay was involved with Paris's ex, Stavros. Days later, Paris's friend, Brandon Davis, ranted to paparazzi about Lindsay, saying, I think she's worth about seven million, which means she's really poor. It's disgusting. She lives in a motel. He continued on, making abhorrent comments about Lindsay's body, calling her a fire crotch, and asking who would want to bleep her. All the while, Paris was in the background of the video, pretending to be on her phone and laughing. The video went viral and Paris's publicist, Elliot Mintz, attempted to do damage control, stating that it is unfair to characterize Brandon's statements as being reflective of Paris's feelings about Lindsay. We're dealing with two different people. It was Brandon who was speaking. Of course, there are moments when Paris was laughing, but she never said anything. Really, Elliot? Brandon would go on to publicly apologize to Lindsay, saying that his behavior was inexcusable, claiming that it had started as a joke that got carried away. Lindsay said she hadn't watched the video, but that Paris is obviously very comfortable making videos, referencing ye old sex tape. She also said that Brandon and Paris had prank called her after the video was taken of Brandon's little rampage and denied that she was dating Stavros. A month later, Paris put out the banger, Stars Are Blind, and apparently they're not only blind, they also like to drive under the influence. That following September, Paris found herself in some legal trouble when the woo-woos pulled her over and charged her with a DUI. Her license was suspended and she was slapped with 36 months probation and a $1,500 fine. And her trouble with Lindsay was just getting started. That November, Lindsay had allegedly called Paris a see you next Tuesday on camera, but then she denied it, saying that she loved Paris. Paris is her friend. A week later, she told the paps that Paris had hit her in the arm with a drink at a party, saying, it hurts and it's not okay. I'm sorry for that everyone thinks I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm just trying to act. But a week later, that infamous photo was taken of Paris, Britney Spears, and Lindsay in Paris's car that had the media dubbing the trio the Holy Trinity. Britney and Paris had been out at the Beverly Hills Hotel at a friend's party, and as they were making their way back to Paris's car, they were swarmed by paparazzi when Lindsay approached them, crashing their night. Lindsay reiterated that Paris was her friend and that everyone lies about everything. Everyone, Lindsay? In February 2007, Paris was stopped by the woo-woos again for driving with a suspended license and had to sign an agreement that she was not permitted to drive, which means she also had a suspended license in the Holy Trinity photo. A month later, she got busted going double the speed limit in a 35 without headlights on at night. Stealth mode wasn't so stealth for our friend Paris. L.A. County prosecutors came for her, and she was sentenced to 45 days in jail for her probation violation. 
She planned to appeal and ask the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for a pardon. But then she changed lawyers and they decided to leave the Terminator alone. After attending the 2007 MTV Movie Awards, she attended the Century Regional Detention Facility in Linwood, California, where she only served four days before being moved to house arrest due to an undisclosed medical condition. But then the judge made her reappear in court and was like, nah, you're going back to the clink. And Paris yelled, it's not right, and asked to hug her mom. While Paris was in jail, Lindsay entered rehab over Memorial Day weekend. After Paris completed her sentence on June 26, 2007, she went on Larry King, who asked her about her friend who was in rehab, to which Paris replied, I have no friends in rehab. Which was strange, since they were hanging out together at Lindsay's 4th of July party only a few weeks later. A month later, Lindsay was back in rehab after being arrested. In 2008, Paris would go on to date Benji Madden, twin brother to Bestie Nicole's boyfriend Joel Madden, well into 2009. Around the same time, she became a target of the infamous Bling Ring, who burgled her to the tune of two million doll hairs. Sofia Coppola shot some of the scenes for the film in Paris's house. After Benji, she dated former baseball player Doug Reinhardt, who was on the hills. Anyone remember when he was Lauren Conrad's ex and was stupping Stephanie Pratt behind Elsie's back? They broke up after a year together, and a week after the breakup, she told Us Weekly, I'm, like, so past that. I don't even care. I don't even remember that time in my life. I'm over it. But then she went on to date Cy Waits, who loved the nightlife he liked to boogie in Vegas, which is how Paris found herself under arrest on August 27th, 2010, along with Cy on the suspicion of cocaine possession and driving under the influence. She pled guilty to two misdemeanors, which scored her a year of probation, 200 hours of community service, a $2,000 fine, and completion of a drug abuse program. It would come back to bite her a month later when she attempted to go to Japan with her sister to promote her fashion line and was stopped in Narada Airport with the country denying her entry. She was promptly put on a plane back home. And if you thought we were done with her Lindsay feud, you'd be wrong. In May of 2011, Paris's reality show The World According to Paris aired, and in one scene, she gave her earrings to a woman who mistook her for Lindsay Lohan, to which Paris replied, If I was Lindsay, I'd be stealing the earrings, not giving them away. This was on the heels of Lindsay receiving a 120-day sentence for stealing a necklace. Paris apologized for her insensitive comment, and by July, the two were partying together once again. By 2012, Paris was making a major change in her life and decided to become a DJ. At first, people were critical, like Dead Mouse, but eventually she'd end up landing a residency in Atlantic City and would perform at Art Basel. Speaking of Art Basel, while attending the show in Miami in 2013, Paris's younger brother, Baron, claimed that he had been attacked by Lindsay, posting his injuries to the gram as one does. It turned out that it was some guy named Ray who tried to rearrange Baron's face, not Lindsay. Paris commented on the photo of her brother's injuries, saying, They will both pay for what they did. No one fucks with my family and gets away with it. Baron filed the police report, but the investigation was later dropped after Baron became uncooperative. Ray claimed that Baron got physical with him first. All charges were dropped, and Lindsay moved to Dubai. Meanwhile, Paris continued to jump around quite a bit in her love life, dating a model from Ibiza named River, then businessman Thomas Gross. There was a brief blip involving actor Adrian Grenier before moving on to another actor, Chris Zilka. Chris and Paris started dating in 2017, and he proposed in Aspen in January of 2018. While Paris had announced the engagement, gushing over fiancé, calling him her best friend and soulmate perfect for in every way, they ultimately called off their engagement in November of 2018. In 2020, she took part in the documentary This is Paris, which revealed her experience at Provo Canyon School. She also started dating businessman Carter Ream. Carter proposed in February of 2021, and they were married that November in a lavish ceremony in Bel Air. They welcomed their first child, Phoenix, on January 16th, 2023, and daughter London earlier this year, both via surrogate. 
Regardless of her antics as a youth, Paris has leveraged her social status to do good, helping raise funds for multiple children's charities, supporting LGBTQ rights, and using her experience at Provo Canyon to not only raise awareness for the atrocious way that kids are being treated at centers like Provo, but also lobbying for legislature to protect kids from the abuse experienced in said centers. And that's Paris. And that's this first episode of Intermission with Max. I hope this is a good little interlude in between full episodes of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. And yeah, this is in the play when it would go ding, ding, ding to let you know to go back to your seat. But you're probably already sitting, so... I will just bid you good day, and may the cults be with you.